Hey, the ducks aren't home, but you know what? I'm back home at the Ponda. We're gonna continue talking about this road trip on this edition of Locked on Anaheim Ducks. Go Ducks, go. Your Locked on Ducks, your daily podcast on the Anaheim Ducks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Jason J.D. Hernandez. I've been covering hockey for well over a decade. And today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Whew, I'm exhausted. Um, as you could probably tell by that intro, I wasn't home for much of the weekend. But I'll, I'll actually explain. So I've been kind of off the last couple of games because I've had youth tournaments and Firebirds hockey and taking my sister to the airport a couple times because one flight got delayed. You know how it goes. I mean, it's storming out in the Northeast. So trying to... Go to the airport has been a challenge this week. But look what I got. I did the Disneyland half marathon. So, woo, woo, yeah. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Getting to run through the parks. This is the first time, by the way, in seven years. Actually, six years, two months to... Yeah. Six years, two months since the Disneyland half marathon or since there's been a half marathon at Disneyland Parks. And we got to go through the Ponda and got to meet up with Wild Wing. So, yeah, cool to get one of these again. It was a lot of fun. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Now that we got that out of the way, I'm going to try to find something positive as a takeaway over the past couple of games. And it was kind of hard to find any kind of positive. So I will have two kind of semi-big takeaways from these past couple of games. And one of them is that Leo Carlson is back. He was supposed to be out about six weeks. He's back in four weeks. Far be it for me to say that he's back too soon. But you know what? I'm okay with Leo Carlson coming back right now, even though it is the tail end of a road trip. Look, the Ducks need some kind of firepower up the middle, especially because the Ducks injuries are piling up as well. And to have Leo Carlson back, I could tell it was just a jolt for a little bit. I mean, the Ducks still had some rejiggering of lines to do. But just just to have him back in general is nothing but a positive. I mean, I always say uh, on this podcast, let the kids play. And Leo Carlson, I think, is one of the best kids on the roster and still one of the best rookies in the National Hockey League. Um, another big takeaway that I want to talk about really quick is Alex Kalorn is starting to heat up a little bit. He had been out with injury, and there were games where he looked like he had lost a step or he looked like he was behind everyone else. But that game against Tampa Bay kind of brought something back in him. There was a two-minute long video for Alex Kalorn during that media timeout. And that was cool to see the tribute for him during that timeout. That was a long video too. And you could see the emotion in his face after that. And he really went after the Lightning. And especially more so against a team that he has had some big goals against, a team that has been his biggest rival for years. And that's the Florida Panthers. Alex Kalorn likes to play against the Florida Panthers. He likes to score big goals against them. We'd seen this in previous years. Well, we kind of found a spark of that in the game against the Florida Panthers where Kalorn was just plain pretty aggressive. Where has this been all season? Have we found the Alex Kalorn that we saw with the Tampa Bay Lightning? Is this the real Alex Kalorn? Maybe it is. But he had two goals against the Florida Panthers, and he was probably the Ducks' best player offensively in a shutout. I know that sounds oxymoronic, but go with me on this. Alex Kalorn was one of the few players that was trying to generate some kind of offense on that game. He was one of the few players 
that had generated any kind of positive play when they had the puck. He was one of the few players that was actually being a little bit aggressive and trying to get not only some shots on goal, but some quality shots on goal. So for me, Alex Kalorn has been the player out of this road trip that I think has gotten better from game one to game five. So I take that as somewhat of a positive sign. And I know I'm I'm trying to find anything positive out of this road trip because there was a lot on this road trip that definitely wasn't good, folks, believe me. But, you know, I just did the half marathon. I just got back. I wanted to at least start off on a positive note and get to all the negatives on a later podcast. But, hey, Alex Kalorn, I, I think you're back. I think you're finally back. All right. We're going to step aside for the first intermission, and I'm going to talk about the last couple of games that the Ducks have played on the road. Now that we're on the other side of the halfway point of the season, I've got a lot to say about both those games. We will get to that on the other side. And now, a very brief word from Sleeper. All right, so the Sleeper app, if you haven't downloaded it yet, That is where you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. And it is the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. And you could win big by projecting whether guys like Kucherov or McKinnon or Crosby record more or less than their sleeper projections. And you could also play fantasy NFL, fantasy NBA, All that on Sleeper. To win 100 times bet on Sleeper, correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Ducks fans. You can win 100 times your money by playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper. So nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code LOCKEDONNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKEDONNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Welcome back to Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jason J.D. Hernandez. Let's talk about the last couple of games on the Ducks road trip where they actually did okay. They won a game. We'll talk about that game right now against the Florida Panthers. Now, this was kind of a weird game, folks, because this was a real back and forth. There was also an early start time, 10 a.m., on Martin Luther King Day. Now, I didn't actually watch this game because I had to drive out to Coachella Valley, but I did listen to almost the entirety of it. And by the way, I've said this several times, but if you're not listening to the games on Duckstream, you're really missing out because Steve Carroll, as I've mentioned, does a fantastic job. Emerson Edom, I think, is a great color commentator. So, you know, maybe you could do it like the old school days, maybe mute the TV and put on Duckstream. And there might be like a two second difference, but hey, you know what? I I love doing that. I think I I think I get a lot more out of listening to Steven Emerson than I do on the TV side. But that's that's just me personally. So let's get to that game against the Florida Panthers. Now, I think my big takeaway from that one was Alex Kalorn. He did get two goals in this game, and the Ducks fought hard on this one to have two two goal comebacks. I think that shows, as Emerson said this several times, this shows the resolve of this Ducks team. The fact that they did not give up and did not get themselves down when they were down two to nothing, they didn't get down and tied the game up. Now, of course, they got back down four to two, but they still didn't give up after that. They still managed to claw their way back and get into this game. And I think that shows how much this team has grown and can grow if they can come back from multiple goal deficits, not once but twice. Then I think this is the game where there was all the good signs for the Ducks and all the bad signs as well. And I'll talk about the bad signs more on another podcast because there's a lot of them. But just to quickly go over this game. Um, Ducks got themselves in trouble right away and special teams were a big issue on this one. 
Sam Bennett scored on the power play. Yes, I know. The Ducks' lack of discipline again. And then the Ducks, while on the power play, nothing happened. They allowed a shorthanded goal. I'm going to try to say positive here. Florida took a 2-0 lead. And then it was Alex Kalorn. Alex Kalorn, I still think, loves playing against this Panthers team. If there's a team that he doesn't like, it's the Panthers. He scored his fifth of the season, finally, making it 2-1. to one. So Ducks are mounting a bit of a comeback. And then the Ducks do something that they haven't done a whole lot this season. They actually not only got a pretty solid penal- penalty kill, they actually scored a shorty. They scored a shorthanded goal against the Panthers, who have been fairly okay on the power play, and they coughed up a shorty to Uncle Rico. <laughs> yeah. So that tied things up at two goals. Awesome. And then the Ducks decided, oh, you know what? We, we, we've had too much of a good thing here. We're going to go ahead and take another penalty. Ryan Strom, what are you doing? Ryan Strom got caught slashing, and what do you think would happen there? You give the Panthers too many opportunities, and they're going to burn you eventually. And they did again. Verhage scored. So the Ducks coughed that up in his 3-2 Panthers. Then Sam Bennett scored his second of the game. Okay, it's 4-2. Everything's going to be okay, Ducks fans. I promise it's going to be fine. Because after that, this is where the big-time resolve happened with the Ducks. And also, and I found it interesting listening to the game and hearing Emerson Edom actually say that Florida was starting to somewhat play back a little bit. I, It sounded like they were content with that two-goal lead and they were starting not to play as aggressive. Hmm. So Silverberg scored. That's only his second of the season, but hey, we love it. So Silphie gets the Ducks to within one going into the third period. Then in the third period, Steve Carroll goes crazy. Oh, Troy Terry. Yeah, Troy Terry tied things up at four goals apiece. His 11th of the season. Troy Terry, by the way, starting to heat up a little bit. He's got 11 goals on this season. Troy Vetchkin starting to play with a little bit more aggression. And I think with having Terry and Carlson back together again going forward, that could help both of them mutually. But again, once certain guys come back from injuries, I think it's going to help the team in general. Troy Terry, he needs to play more aggressive like this. He needs to start looking for any kind of high quality shot, even if it's a backhand shot. He's got a pretty good backhand shot, folks. We've seen Troy Terry make these kind of goals in previous years. This is what has gotten Troy Terry into the All-Star game the prior two seasons. Play more aggressive. Get pucks to the net. So that tied it up at four. Then we go to overtime. It sounded like the Ducks pretty much had control on this one all the way. And Alex Kalorn rifled it through. Former Duck, you ready for this? Anthony Stolarz. Kalorn got it past Stoli the goalie in overtime. And that's your game winner. His sixth of the season. 5-4 to four Anaheim Ducks over the Florida Panthers. Despite getting outshot 33-26, to 26, the Ducks resolve paid off big time. Just love seeing that. I, I loved the last three goals in particular. You know, Silverberg. You know, going five hole on Stoli, Troy Terry, a great aggressive shot, and Alex Kalorn just gaining good control of the puck. But I also have to give credit to the All Star Frankie Frank Vetrano. Yes, that Frank Vetrano. Uh, revenge game, much? Yeah, that was a definite revenge game for both Vetrano and Alex Kalorn, who had both previously played in the state of Florida. That was the revenge game of revenge games. You love to see it. I realize that we are up against it a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick intermission, talk about the game against the Washington Capitals, 
and kind of put a bow on this whole road trip. We'll get to that on the other side. Now, a brief word from eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience. Patience underlines, Ducks fans. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride. Every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, excluding supply. Your eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back to Locked On Anaheim Ducks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Once again, you're locked on with Jason J.D. Hernandez. Let's talk about that lousy game against the Washington Capitals. This one kind of drove me nuts, folks. It really did. Actually, watching this whole game the entire way, this was the John Gibson show, in a sense. I think Gibby definitely wanted the freaking taser in this one. Because he tried everything in his power to keep the Ducks in it. That was also the return of Leo Carlson, by the way. That top line of Kalorn, Carlson, Terry, they were they were pretty okay. Also, McTavish still on the third line. Because McTavish recently hasn't been playing all that great defense. Yeah, I could see why he'd be in the third line. McTavish going through his struggles right now. On this one, we had an early too many men penalty on the Capitals. Yeah, the Ducks didn't get a too many men penalty. The Ducks learned how to count. The Ducks can count to five now. Oh my God. Yeah, they actually did. So that was power play time for the Ducks where they did absolutely nothing. This will be a theme. Then we had a nice little spirited brawl. Not really a brawl, but a spirited little fisticuff between, I think it was Joel Edmondson and Ross Johnston. There were some hard hits. I think Johnston took a heavy hit on someone, and then there was a hit back, then another hit back. So it was like three consecutive big open ice hits. And finally, Johnston and Edmonton had enough. They were like, all right, let's go. All right, drop the gloves. Bam, there they go. They start fighting right by the bench. Okay, that was a neat little scuffle. Then we had what I thought was the worst play of the game. Now, I'm still a fan of Leo Carlson. However, he is still a rookie. This was his first game back. There were a couple of shifts on this game, and this is where I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, okay? Leo Carlson is going to have his rookie moments. He is going to have his mistakes, whether it's on the neutral zone or behind his own net. That's something that he has to be careful about. And part of the first couple of shifts of mistakes, I attribute that to he hasn't played in over a month. It's been a while since he's had any in-game action. This was a bad mistake, leading to what, in my mind, was going to be the only goal of the game. So Leo Carlson had the puck in his own end. like He was behind Gibby to the right, and Leo Carlson had control. And that's where he kind of like tried to stick handle, but he couldn't exactly do it. And I don't know if he was trying to gain control of the puck or if he was trying to pass it. I don't know if he was entirely sure, but he coughed up the puck and that was a bad turnover, which gave control to the Washington Capitals. And about 15 seconds after that turnover, bam, Ethan Bear scored. That made it one nothing caps. And there was two players that I thought did not do well on that one, especially on a four on four, by the way, because there were offsetting penalties going on on that four on four. And I think this was on the penalties between, I want to say this was Strom and Mantha that had the offsetting penalties. And this was also towards the very end of the first period. When it's towards the end of the first period, 
you need to keep control and maintain control throughout the rest of that period. Yes, you can slow down a little bit, but you know, don't make those bad decisions towards the end of the period. We've seen this happen a lot. You know, you keep control. You try to get at least one or two more good shots. You pay attention to the clock and you say, okay, there's about 40, 30 seconds left. Hold the puck for a few seconds. Wait for that line change and then see what happens. Try to generate something. Nope, just a bad turnover. So this one, part of it goes on Leo Carlson. Part of it goes on Troy Terry who just looked completely lost out there defensively. That was a bad look by Troy Terry, just looking absolutely befuddled defensively. And that's what led to that Ethan Bear goal. That that was it. I don't know who Troy was trying to pick up or who he was trying to cover for, but all of a sudden, TJ Oshie getting it right towards, towards a good, better, uh, towards a better spot rather. That's what I'm trying to say, folks. And Ethan Bear picked his spot, and that's his first goal of the season. So that was one nothing Washington, and it remained one nothing for pretty much the rest of the game. I mean, Alex Kalorn, he kind of had like a semi breakaway. That I think is why I try to have some kind of positive in Alex Kalorn. There was positive in the Florida game. There was positive in the Tampa game. There was positive in this game. He did a great job protecting the puck and breaking away from not one, but two defenders. Alex Kalorn was behind the play. He was behind those two guys and somehow got it off of a turnover, used his active stick, and he just kind of like bodied his way towards the goal. Great job, Alex Kalorn. And that was a semi-breakaway on a shorthanded attempt. Didn't go in, but I love seeing that. Okay, cool. So that made it still one nothing, but that kind of made Washington fans a little bit nervous. Yeah. Oh, and I tweeted this. What does it tell you when the Ducks' best scoring chance was halfway through the second period on a shorthanded attempt? The Ducks had nothing offensively for most of the rest of the game. A lot of it. Even when the Ducks had a power play, there was a lot of bad passing around. The rest of the game was pretty much the John Gibson show. You know, there was two attempts by Alexei Protus and Connor McMichael. Neither of those went in. He kept the Ducks in it. He did everything he could to keep the Ducks in this game. But the Ducks offense just couldn't do anything until the very end when they finally decided, hey, we're going to play some offense. We're going to try to do something here. Okay, so let's start getting some more shots on net towards the halfway point of the third period. We're behind one nothing. Let's try something. Okay, let's get some shots on net. Nothing's going in. There were some decent attempts on Darcy Kemper, and nothing just went in. Then the Ducks pulled John Gibson, and that's when the barrage of shots really began to happen. It was attempt after attempt after shot after shot. And you're kind of watching this going, wow, where has this been all game? They can't play like this for only three minutes when they're behind by a goal. They need to have this kind of aggression for more of the game. They've got to start playing a full 60 minutes of hockey. They have not been doing that a whole lot this season. That's where they got pretty much half their shot attempts was those final few minutes. And none of them went in. And Tom Wilson scored an empty netter. Ducks lost that one. Two to nothing. Kind of an appropriate way to end that road trip. But the Ducks are off for a few days. They're back home with a back-to-back this weekend. And I'll talk more about that on an upcoming podcast. But here's what we got coming up this week. So once again, apologize, but Monday was a holiday. I was gone all day. Tuesday was pretty much spent at airports. Yeah. So now we're finally back today. Tomorrow will be Goals Thursday. So we'll be filming that live from Acrisure Arena. And then we will have at least one show on Friday. That's the goal right now is to have at least one show on Friday, hopefully two shows. 
and the Ducks have a back-to-back over the weekend. So watch for a full slate of shows next week. With that being said, thank you for listening. Thanks for watching. Don't forget this podcast is free and available across all platforms, including Stitcher, Spotify, Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, among others. You could email me at LockedOnAnaheimDucks at gmail.com. The Twitter account is StimpyJD. The show's Twitter account is at LO underscore Ducks. And once again, thank you all for your continued support. It is so greatly appreciated. For Locked on Anaheim Ducks, I'm Jason J.D. Hernandez saying have a great rest of the afternoon. Please remember to be safe out there, be kind to one another, and Ducks fly together.